Well, my name's Gia, as you've all met me this morning. Um, I am a, a student beauty trainer, hair extension trainer, nail tech, and I've just started in holistics. Um, basically, I'm a little bit more nervous than I normally would be today, because normally when I'm teaching, I have a very nice lady stood next to me helping me all the way. Um, so this is basically the first teaching I've done on my own, so bear with me. Um, basically, today, um, as we only have the 15 minutes, um, I'm just going to do with you a simple nail shape and polish. Um, I don't know whether, have any of you ever done anything like this before on yourselves, on partners, friends, daughters, yeah. friends, anybody pass in the street? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm going to pass around the handouts for you. I'll stop shaking, I'm like going to... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, basically, all you're going to need for this is obviously your hand sanitizer. It doesn't really make a difference today because we're really working on plastic nails. But if you want to pass these on. Sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. Thank you. This is good. I'll just keep going around this. <laughs> today um, I've used an orange stick, some white tack and an artificial nail just because I'm sure that you gentlemen didn't want to go home with <laughs> lovely bright pink nails. <laughs> um, basically we're going to start, I'm going to show you how I do it and then we're going to give you some time to have a go and I'll come around and just give you any feedback or help on your way. Is this going to be a new experience for some of you? <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's going to be a bit of fun anyway. <laughs> a nail file or an emery board. Um, they come in all different grits. The higher the grit, the softer they are. So you will see them packaged and they'll say like 240 grit, which is great for natural nails. Extensions, not so good. So then you would need something like a 120 grit or something like that, which are far more abrasive and will take down a lot quicker. So you don't tend to use those on your natural nails, otherwise before you've known, you've gone all the way down, you've got nothing left. <laughs> So I'll pass this around so you can have a feel of the difference. That one would be for artificial extensions. And these would be more for your, for your natural nail. I'll pass these around now anyway because you're going to be using these in a sec. Sorry, which one was this? Um, the black one that's coming round, that oh. one is for artificial nails, so extensions. Okay. Um, or if you've got any thickened nails. It's a lot better. <laughs> I know, I hate the sound of these nails after I'm happy. Yeah, you can. Literally, you will laugh. I have just been doing it for house as a project as well, and I have used these for sanding the corners of the wood where you can't get in with the sander, so they're very good for all sorts. Has everybody got a nail file, uh, an emery board here now? Yeah? Right. So, first of all, you would ask your client, your friend, or you, or you would know yourself what type of shape you would like. Um, obviously, these already come in a square shape, but that's not <coughs> what normal people want, their natural nail. The way to tell what your natural shape would be for your nail is if you have a look at the top of your nail there, where your cuticle is, the shape where your nail starts, what comes out of the nail matrix, that is what the natural shape of your nail should be at the end. So, if you've got no preference, if you just look at your nail and you think, I'm going to go natural, Go with the guideline, obviously with men, always go with the guideline at the top there, at the bottom, so it, it just looks natural, so it looks like you've just tidied up your nails, or that they're just naturally blessed with lovely nails. <laughs> so firstly, you might need to hold the extension because it's only held on by blue tack. You're going to shape the nail. Now with the artificial extension, it makes no difference if you seesaw. If you've done it on a natural nail, only you stroke in one direction, into the middle, so if you seesaw back and forth, you'll weaken the nail plate, and then you'll get splitting of the nail, which is really painful. Um, and they'll just be like paper thin. They, they will they will come out. So you're just going to shake the nail. You don't shake down the sides. The only thing you would do with the sides, if they are too sharp, or if you've got a jagged edge there, literally just sweep it round, in a sweeping motion, very lightly. So you're just taking off anything that's going to catch. Go 
Look, I'm okay with that. And obviously, with the artificial extension, you'll get the filing stuck underneath. So if you take the end of your nail file, sweep it underneath, and sweep it across the edge, it'll take all any of the extra filings away. So once you shape the nail to the, to the shape that you desire, if, you're, if you or your client had any nail varnish on, you just get a bit of acetone, nail varnish remover, wipe it over, take the nail varnish off before you start. The most important thing when polishing a nail, believe it or not, that many people leave out is the base coat. You don't need to use a base coat that is specifically designed for base coat, clear nail polish. If you don't use this, you will get really lovely yellow coloured nails because the varnish will discolour your natural nail. And that doesn't look right. <laughs> the amount of girls we have in that go, oh, my nails have gone yellow and I don't know why, is because they haven't used any base coat. Base coat is also a good thing to have on your nails any day, any time, just to start your every day. Like your bleach, that you, if you're cleaning the sink, you've got bleach on your hands, if you've got any things from work, if you're doing spray tanning, as you will know, <laughs> it stains the nail pretty quickly. Or with cooking, if you're using any spices, turmeric is a nightmare, it will stain your nails. Um, so base coat is a good thing to keep on every day, nobody can see it because it, it's clean. So firstly, I'm having the same problem with the nail polish. <laughs> First off, the most important thing with nail ash as well is you never shake the bottle. If you need to mix it, just roll it in your hands like that gently. If you shake the bottle, all your nail polish will hide up in there. And when you go to do it, it will go everywhere. And I mean it goes everywhere. So you're going to take your brush, gently drain any excess off on the side. You can everybody see that one, don't they? Just literally gently drain any excess on the neck of the bottle, so it goes back in, doesn't come down the side, that's how they stick together. So then, obviously if this is on your natural nail, you have a nice cuticle around there, so you'd always leave a one millimetre gap around the cuticle. You don't want to get on your skin, because that, that's how infections, and it's not so much infections rather than um, allergic reactions. The longer something's on your skin, the more likely you are to have an allergic reaction. Okay? So you know. Firstly, you're going to take one sweep down the centre of the nail. One long sweep. Okay? Then, you're going to go to your left side and your right side. Obviously, I've got a rather large nail on mine. You've all got different sizes. If you found that you haven't gone right to the edge with the three sweeps, by all means, carry on to the edge. Okay? That's this round. You tell her. Girl, there's three here, so if you want to wait. Well, you can pass it on. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I've got another one to do. It's at the end. The same book. <laughs> they are new, <laughs> so you might need a bit of extra force. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's it, let me. Warms the nail polish as well. Obviously, with nail polish, when you're storing it, you don't want it to be in any extremer temperatures. So if it's kept too cold, it'll affect the it'll affect the nail polish. If it's kept too hot, it'll affect the nail polish. So you want to keep it just room temperature, and they should last you a long time. You look like you're coping very well with that. I'm impressed. So once you've applied your base coat, you're going to give it a couple of seconds just to start to dry. It doesn't have to be completely dry before you put your next coat on. Just give it a couple of seconds so you're not getting it stuck on your next nail brush. On your nail brush? No. <laughs> you can if it's your own, you can if it's your own. But if, if you were doing it on somebody else and you, you're blowing, it, it's, 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 <laughs> if you want to wave it around, you can wave it around by all means. So then you're going to take your colour, I'll use the black so you can see. Again, rolling it in your hands. Obviously you don't need to do that between every nail, but obviously it's, we're only doing it on the one nail. Again, <coughs> drain the excess polish. And exactly the same method as you just used to put your base coat on, you put your polish on. So straight down the middle.
first side. And then the second side. When you do your first coat, you'll notice that the colour isn't as even as you want it. So I'm going to pass these. I'm going to pass the lock colours around because I've got, I've got quite a few. But that's not to worry if the colour's not even because it won't cover well, fully in the first. I'm going to just take it in make sure you get one. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Has everybody got, everybody got one there? I know, I know, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Try and do it all with one sort of load of the brush, or is it? No, it, if you if you try and load the brush up too much to do the whole nail, you'll you'll find that it'll it'll run off the brush and it'll go on your skin. And it'll get everywhere. It's better that if you that you can reload the brush as many times as you need. Mm -hmm. It's better to have a, a small amount of polish on the brush rather yeah. than too much. And yeah, if you want to keep the nail polish with you, because we're now going to do the second coat. With this coat, you'll find that the coverage will be a lot more even. So again, straight down the middle, first side, and then the second side. When you're doing it on a natural nail, always make sure that if, there's, if the side walls are up close to the nail, if you pinch gently underneath and pull it down, allow you to go right in the corners, so you're not left with all nail varnish on your skin. Oh, I've smudged it! Smudged it! it. Oh. <laughs> Spent all that time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, clumsy. That's it, just give it another coat over, no one will know the difference. <laughs> oh, I was waiting for your praise. Oh. <laughs> So after you've applied the second coat, we're going to give it a little bit longer than what we left for the base coat because we're now going to put a clear coat over the top and it'll get into your clear polish and contaminate the polish. And every time you like this one, you see here it's got a slight pinky tinge. <laughs> That's because the last person that used it didn't give it enough time to dry. So while you're doing this, obviously when you're doing a full hand, you can go on and do the other nails. By the time you've gone done and done all ten, You'll be ready to start on the first one again. But obviously we've only got one nail here, so we're gonna have to give it a little minute. Has anybody got any questions so far? Everybody doing okay? Well, you look like you're doing okay. Well, just point out that you have done 15 minutes. I've done 15 minutes, right. All you would do, we can just finish it off here. All you do then is take your top coat, apply it in exactly the same manner as you've done your base coat and your polish, and your job done. Thank you. No problem.